All right, so in this topic, we are identifying acids and bases by the chemical formula. So there are some important hints that we can gather from the chemical formula to help us determine what type of compound we have. So number one, how do we know if we have an ionic compound? Well, generally, ionic compounds have metal atoms and nonmetal atoms. That's a very general definition. We could get more technical talking about cations and anions, but a good general definition that works most of the time is metals and nonmetals uh, come together to form ionic compounds. So when I look at this first example, I see magnesium and fluorine. That is obviously an ionic compound because magnesium is a metal. If I see a metal, I'll call it ionic. So this would be ionic. Well, what about a molecular compound? Generally, molecular compounds are only nonmetal atoms present. So this again would not be a molecular compound because I have magnesium atoms, which are metal atoms. What about acids? When we look at chemical formulas, Acid compounds are going to have what we call ionizable protons or hydrogen ions that can be released when they dissolve in water. For example, that's an acid. That's an acid. That's an acid. These are some examples of acids. What do we see? Well, I see that hydrogen is the first element listed in their chemical formula. And when these dissolve in water, this hydrochloric acid will actually lose that uh, H plus ion. So it will dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. And the same for these other acids. There are a few rare exceptions where this this hint of, well, if you see a hydrogen at the beginning of the chemical formula, it's an acid. Um, there are a few ex exceptions. This is chemistry uh, where that is actually not true. For example, hydrogen peroxide. Well, we see hydrogen there at the beginning of the chemical formula, but this, in fact, is not an acid. Also, water would be another example. And to be technical, water actually acts as an acid and also a base. But just going by our hint, it is one of these exceptions, okay? But for these problems, it should work out just fine for us following these guidelines. And last, we have bases. How do I know whether or not I have a base? Well, just like acids release H plus ions when dissolved in water, bases release hydroxide ions. So acids release H plus ions and bases release hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. So any compound that has hydroxide in it, like sodium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide, would be considered a base. So for this second compound, I have potassium hydroxide. Is it an acid? No. Is it a base? Yes. It's a base because there's hydroxide there. But it's also ionic. Why? Because there's a metal atom, potassium. Let's look at the next. We have sulfurous acid. I'm looking here. I know that this is not an ionic compound because I see no metal atoms. It would be molecular. So our compounds are either going to be ionic or molecular. In this case, I have a molecular compound. Also, it is an acid. Why? Because I see hydrogen here at the beginning of the chemical formula that is ionizable. So this would be a molecular compound that is an acid. Our last one here, phosphorus acid, is again molecular. There are no nonmetal atoms here. And it's also an acid. I see hydrogen here at the beginning of the chemical formula. It's not one of the rare exceptions, 
and it also doesn't have hydroxide in it, so it's not a base.